he had his theory, uh, and he didn't have any way of proving it because, I mean, how do you prove something like that? <laughs> you, you, until, uh, un, until this family showed up at his doorstep, um, and it was a uh, family, a Canadian family from Winnipeg, I think, right? Um, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And they were the, the Reamer family, a blue collar, very young couple, 20, 21 years old. Um, and they had a horrific tragedy in their family, which is that they gave birth to twin boys. The boys were fine. And when the boys were, well, actually, they had phimosis. Phimosis is a um, abnormality of the um, opening the the opening of the urethra. And so the doctors um, recommended circumcision for the boys. And they went in when they were eight months old for circumcision. And uh, the first boy to go in for the f- circumcision was Bruce. And the, um, the equipment, uh, the equipment, there was a, a, a malfunction of the equipment and they were cauterizing the, the penis in order to circumcise it. And instead of just that small amount of tissue that was supposed to be cauterized, apparently the, the, uh, you know, the settings were incorrect and the entire penis was burnt. So Bruce's penis was burnt um, you know, beyond any functionality. So these poor parents went home. The other, the other boy was not circumcised, just obviously. They went home and what are they supposed to do? They have a boy without a penis. What the hell are they supposed to do? So months later, they were um, watching television and John Money happened to be on there and you have to know also that John Money was an extremely pompous, um, uh, self-assured individual. Uh, he was sophisticated. Uh, when he talked, you listened. Um, he came across as being definitive, being, you know, calling the shots, knowing, knowing what was going on, knowing the research, knowing the truth. And he... He, in this interview on television, said that a boy can be raised as a girl and a girl can be raised as a boy if it's caught, if, if it's done early enough. And that um, early enough means be- before the age of two and a half or three. Um, and, and the parents, the Reamer parents, immediately uh, took note of that and they thought, here, here's the answer. This, this is the answer for, for Bruce. This is what we're supposed to do. So they contacted uh, Dr. Money down in, uh, in Baltimore, uh, and, they, and they made an appointment and took the twins down to Baltimore and went down there. Again, you have to understand that this was a uneducated, young, blue-collar family and when they were interviewed later about their meetings with John Money, um, they described him as like, we just thought he was God. Mm-hmm. We just thought, you know, this is, I mean, he's a professor and he's, you know, got all the diplomas and he's the head of this, uh, this, this entire clinic, clinic at, yeah. at, a, at an outstanding uh, university, one of the major universities uh, in, in the world. That was Johns at Johns Hopkins, Hopkins right? Yes, yeah, right. yes. So you have to imagine this young couple coming and they're at a loss and they are looking for an answer. They've been praying, they're looking for an answer to their prayers. What are we gonna do with Bruce? And John Money says, well, we have an answer for you because male and female, is actually not related to chromosomes. It's not related to hormones. It's not innate. We can take little Bruce and we have to do some surgery on Bruce. We have to castrate him and we'll remove his testicles 
He already didn't have a penis. We're going to remove his testicles. We're going to make, we're going to fashion, you know, some sort of um, elementary sort of female genitalia. You're going to give him a girl's name. And you're going to put him in pink dresses and give him dolls and raise him as a girl. And you are never, ever, Dr. Money told the parents, never to tell him that this was truly what happened in, in, you know, after he was born. Never tell him, because that will ruin everything. And it's up to you. You have to just work your hardest to raise him as a girl and make sure that everyone around him is, raising, is considering him a girl, because essentially he is a girl. And so not only was this the answer to the Reamers' prayers, this was, as you can understand now, the answer to Dr. Money's prayers. Right, right. He had okay. an experiment. This was the experiment. This was his proof of concept. His concept was that being male and female is completely separate from biology. It's imposed by society. It's a social construct. And this was his proof of concept. And so the Reamers went home. Well, he had his surgery. Uh, they took him home. They named, uh, they named Bruce Brenda. They put him in all the girls' clothing and they gave him dolls and they you know, they did all the, all the things. And he peed sitting down sometimes. Because <laughs> as we'll learn later, he actually preferred urinating standing up, which is astonishing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We learned later that he always wanted to urinate standing up. Mm. And from the time he was in diapers, I think... He was told he was a girl. So that really is fascinating. But anyway, um, so they took him home, raised him as a girl, and uh, Dr. Money started to follow the twins. Every year they would come down for a visit. Um, the parents would spend time speaking to Dr. Money, and then the money, I mean the money, <laughs> there's a slip. <laughs> Freudian slip for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Money would take the twins without the parents into his office and spend time with the twins. So this went on for years. And Dr. Money began to report on his study that became a famous landmark study. Um, and he called them... Uh, uh, he called her Joan in his, in his study. He was beginning to write about this and lecture. And he was claiming that Joan, uh, a.k.a. Brenda, a.k.a. Bruce, was doing great. I mean, uh, she was adjusting. She was, she may be a bit of a tomboy. He, he, he would acknowledge that. But in every way, you know, she was adjusting and she was doing well with friends and with schools and she liked playing with dolls and she uh, would mimic her mom. And he was giving this glowing, glowing report from year to year and in his, um, in his uh, you know, professional writing of his, his studies, his report, and he was giving talks um, and he was getting, you might imagine, tremendous attention for this. I mean, you have to understand, this was by now maybe, uh, you know, the early 60s. This is feminism, okay? This is the sexual revolution. This is a time when society, um, or, or at least part of society, wanted nothing more to say that male and female is a social construct, and that in order to gain, you know, full equality, women have to be considered the same as men. And, you know, to have a study such as this study of John Money's, in which he was reporting that this baby who was X, Y, you know, normal chromosomes, normal everything biologically, but is being successfully raised as a girl because he has a girl's name and girls and dresses and dolls 
and all, you know, his entire society, his teachers and his grandparents and everyone is reinforcing the idea that he's a delicate uh, girl who, who, who likes to cook and, you know, is going to grow up to have babies. I mean, this was huge. Now, um, what happened is that this theory of John Money's um, became, was accepted over, over the decades. We didn't find out what really happened with the twins until decades later. Um, and in the meantime, in, during those decades, his theory was, became doctrine. Okay, his theory became just baked into, um, you know, so, so many fields of uh, both soft and hard science so that it, it, it was standard that whenever you had, um, for example, a, a, an XY uh, or any, any child that, that had ambiguous genitalia, if they could be raised as a girl, they'd be raised as a girl. So they'd be castrated just automatically. Why? because of the great success, because of what John Money um, proved to us, proved to us. And so lots and lots of boys all over the world. I mean, this was written into the, you know, the textbooks of endocrinology and the textbooks of uh, uh, genetics. I mean, this became truth, so to speak. Not that there weren't people, uh, you know, other, other scientists that were standing up and, and saying, uh, John, you know, this isn't proven yet. You know, let's look a little closer. I don't, this is not necessarily the case. But what did he do? He wouldn't tolerate that. John Money, uh, you know, was a tyrant. He would not tolerate another uh, 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 psychologist or, or biologist or geneticist standing up and trying to publish something that would challenge uh, his great gender theory. He would he 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 would arrange you know he would intimidate the um, the editors at the scientific journals to not publish those articles. It's a lot of what's actually going on right now is very similar. Right. So right. Um, right. so what happened with the twins is that uh, after decades, uh, in fact, John Money wrote a book in 1997 in which he said yet again that his twin study, um, uh, that, his, that his gender theory had been uh, confirmed and supported by the results of this experiment with the twins. And the following- One, one person experiment, by the way, a one person experiment. Yeah, but even that one person, it didn't work. Okay, so in 19, right. yeah. So in 1998, um, uh, uh, what do we call him now? Not Brenda. N not Bruce, but what happened is that we, 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 we discovered that he, he stood up and he said, he, he just blew the cover of this whole thing was a hoax. And he, his name was now David. Brenda had become David. And he was not only, not only a man, but he was married to a woman with, uh, and he had adopted three stepchildren and he worked as a janitor in a slaughterhouse. Right. So that was David, David Reamer, and people can go onto YouTube and hear him being interviewed about his experience of what it was like to be told um, mm -hmm. for 14 years of his life that he's a girl and to never, ever, ever feel that that was, that that was his truth. To, and, and, um, what happened is that during all those years, he, he was not happy with his dresses and with his dolls. Uh, he, was, he, was, he wanted to go play with, with his brother's toys. He wanted to um, pee standing up. He wanted to, uh, you know, he was rough. He was, he, 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 was, he was so boyish that, and aggressive that um, kids called him uh, cave woman. Okay, they made fun of him because the way mm. the way that he walked huh, and the, huh, and his huh. gestures and his interests were all so masculine. 
and he was a miserable child, and the, and the family was miserable, and on top of everything, when he was going back, when the family was going back for those yearly visits to Johns Hopkins with Dr. Money, Dr. Money was sexually abusing those twins. Okay, how? He was forcing them to undress and um, to, uh, to mimic sexual intercourse, and he would say, you know, this is how, uh, this is what men and women do together, and he would, you know, humiliate them and show them pictures, and the point came, why did they stop going down to mm. Johns Hopkins? The boys refused to go. They refused to go back to see Dr. Money, and the parents couldn't understand why. Mm. Are you feeling overwhelmed by the craziness of the world around you? Do you find yourself constantly searching for peace and stability amidst the chaos? If so, then it might be time to start building a daily prayer routine. Join me and thousands of others on Hallow, the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. Download the app for free at hallow.com Jordan. You can set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Not sure where to start? Check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year, available on the Hallow app for brief daily Bible readings and reflections. Or pray alongside Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, and even some world-class athletes. With Hallow, you can customize a personal prayer plan that works for you. Listen anywhere you are with downloadable offline sessions. Get an exclusive three-month free trial at hallow.com slash Jordan. That's hallow.com slash Jordan. What happened to David Reimer? What happened? Did uh, David Reimer committed suicide eventually, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's the denouement of that particularly tragic And tape. And his twin. So not only was this a failure, it was a... And, go ahead. Oh, no. It was a disaster, terrible disaster. He committed suicide, and his twin brother died of an, of an opiate overdose before him. His twin right. died first. The entire family was, you know, what, what, are the, what kind of words? What, I mean, traumatized? It's not enough. Trauma is not enough to describe what that family went through. My parents didn't know a lot that was going on. And if they would have known, that would never would have happened. By me not saying anything, uh, the medical community was under the impression that my case was a success story. And I was shocked when I heard that people thought that my case was a success story. So, so what we should point out here is that, that uh, this experiment couldn't possibly have gone more cataclysmically wrong than it did. Right? Not only was what Money was saying was not true in the technical scientific sense, it was an anti-truth and he falsified the data and it culminated in the death of two people, the demolition of a family and the perversion of an entire culture. That's and John Money's legacy. And, and he, never, he never publicly acknowledged it. He never publicly acknowledged that um, the twins had, uh, well, that one of the, I don't know what the, John Money died, I think, in 2006, and I think he had dementia. But when the book came out, and uh, when John Colapinto's book came out that, that just, like, exposed this whole calamity, there was nothing from John Money. He was still alive. He could have made a statement. Nothing. I'm just saying that that's just another you know, indication of what the morality, the immorality of this person and the, you know, the, the, the lack of, of acknowledgement, you know, of, of, of what they're guilty of doing. I mean, you know, I guess it's too much to expect.